Soul, you got a little bit of show. Waddy Waddy and he rock and roll and live on the telephone. We have got the one and only Mr. Romeo Challenger. Good morning to you, Romeo. Good afternoon, I should Good say now. Good afternoon to you. Oh, and how are you? Not too bad at all. I'm just um, enjoying a morning l um, looking out of my um, living room. So. so you got the sunshine there, have you? Well, you haven't got sunshine, but it's not. It's it's intermittent. It's been. It was a little bit sunny this morning. Then it's gone a bit overcast. Yes, yeah, it's quite the same down here as well at the moment. But uh, we're used to the uh, rain and wind and everything else, that, but except the sunshine down here. So we're quite used to it. So then, Romeo, um, I'm going to start the interview off if I may now, and uh, I'm going to ask you: How did Shawadi Wadi form, and in what year? Well, uh, Shawadi was formed in 1973. Um, we were originally two bands. Um, we played in this pub called the Fosway in Leicester. Um, you know, we used to take it in turns to do one week. It would be a band called Choice, and the other week it would be a band called the Golden Hammers. Now, the Golden Hammers had Rod D's, Malcolm Lurid, Buddy Gas and Russ Field in it, and Choice had myself, Romeo, Rod, Jeff, Trev, and Dave. And um, we decided, what, what, what happened, we used to go to see each other's gigs, and one night, on a Tuesday night, we decided that um, it'd be nice if we sort of got, got together and just play some old classic songs. Um, actually, we did that on the night, and it, <laughs> lo and behold, it went down better than the sets we were doing. So we decided to, well, maybe, we maybe we've got something going here. Maybe we should, you know, take it a stage further and do regular gigs. And by doing that, we build up quite uh, a decent following, certainly among, amongst the Leicestershire people. Yeah, because, of course, uh, most of the band are, are from uh, the Leicestershire area. Yeah, we yeah we are. Well, I mean, we, we all lived in Leicester, Leicestershire anyway, so it was quite handy. I have actually stood outside Dave Bartram's house in Leicestershire. <laughs> Many moons ago. <laughs> did Many moons ago, I actually stood outside uh, Dave Bartram's house up in Oh, Le did you? In yeah. Iceland? Yeah. Because oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, that was one of my claims to fame, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when you say you um, the two uh, bands uh, come together, and, of course, uh, you had uh, two bassists, two guitarists, two vocalists, and two drummers? Yeah, actually, can I just say something now? Yeah. Yeah. The reception here, I can't really hear you very well at all. Right, we'll see if we can order this up a second for you now. It's, just. Not, it's very faint. It's, yeah, yeah, it's very difficult for me to actually hear what you're saying. Okay. How's that now? Lovely. Ah, there you are. We're there. <laughs> right, like I said, um, with the bands uh, coming together, th the two bands, you had uh, two vocalists, two guitarists, two bassists, and of course two drummers. Yes. So uh, I know the, the, you know the things are like the vocalist and the guitarist w would work all right. But how about the two drummers? Oh well, we, we well the, the two drummers were good. I mean, because what we did, I mean, we didn't play all the songs with two drummers. Right. I mean, uh, the, you know, they what we did it was just. It, it, I mean, it was visually, visually, visually quite different from other people. Um, um, and it, it added a lot of more sort of. Uh, um, bottom end to the set. I mean, we, we bas basically what we did is like I went on stage at the start, and then uh, Malcolm would come in and play along with me to give us a bit more bottom end and you know a bit more sort of impetus and all the rest of it. And um, he'd go off stage and he would swap over. I mean, it was, it was very rarely that we played all together all the time. You know, I mean, a lot of the time is I played most of the stuff on the stage anyway, and Malcolm would play blah blah this intro, this and that, and all the rest of it. But generally, we I mean, we had two drummers in name, but basically on stage I did most of the drumming anyway. Ah, with him, yeah. Mal Mal Malcolm was great as far as um, say his presentation, running around and you know doing his bit and all the rest of it. But the drumming was actually um, I did. I, Anybody who's seen Shawadi Wadi in the early days would know that. Yeah, right. Ninety percent of drumming was done by myself, anyway. Yeah, right. Actually, I've seen three times myself: uh, twice in Ebervale and once in Abertillery in the leisure centres. Oh yes, yes, right, yes. 
I remember them days very well. <laughs> yes. Well, of course, um, I, I don't know if you realise this, but um, last Saturday was the 40th anniversary of um, Shawadi Wadi's first ever single, Hey Rock and Roll. Yeah, yeah. Any any thoughts about um, re-releasing the track? So I can speak that speaker, but I can't. Any, have we got any uh, plans to um, re-release Hey Rock and Roll? Um, n no, we, not at the moment. Don't, it, it's never crossed our mind to... Re I mean, I think... Um, re-releases re are fine, but uh, I think it's, it's not something that we've thought about doing. I mean, we, what we have done, though, is recorded a live album, which is something we haven't done ever in our, in, in our history, and it was recorded um, 18 months ago, and, and, and we sort of sell those at our gigs. Ah, right, yes. Is that the one that's called um, the uh, Complete Studio Recordings? Yes, and there is that as well. I mean, that's everything we've, we've done. You know, and, it's, and it also has some rarities. Stuff that, you you know, the, any any fan of Shawadi Wadi would probably want to hear and be interested. Well, oh, definitely. Um, some of them I've forgotten myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking through the... Um, the things that um, Shawadi Wadi done, the success they had, and um, hopefully continue to have as well. They had 34 singles that was released. One number one, which was, of course, Under the Moon of Love in 1976. Yeah. You spent a total of 338 weeks in the UK charts, which is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realise that. I know they had 20 odd of 33 hits, I think, thereabouts, but... I didn't think, I didn't, I mean, you know, the statistics is not something I looked into much, so that's quite, quite that's quite awesome really, isn't it? It is, and uh, the one that I think is particularly um, special, and to me, as a, like I said, as a Shawadi Wadi fan, is that uh, you spent more weeks in the charts and you had more hits than any other artist in the UK in the 1970s. Oh, that's fantastic, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, giving me, you're giving me statistics and, and news that I, I didn't realise. Thanks for that. It, well, it's, it, it is unreal, to be honest, though, because um, the, you, there is a lot of, um, of course, there's still a lot of the glam rock sections around. Yeah, I mean, it, I think, I mean when you consider who were around at that time, I mean, the, all the legends of rock and roll in the rock and roll business were around in the 70s. Exactly, so they were just, so, you know... For us to have done that, it is, it's quite an achievement. Well, one thing I always wanted to ask, um, ask uh, where did the idea come from for you all to wear your crepes and drapes? Sorry? Where did the idea come from for all of you to dress up, you know, in the uh, rock and roll style, the uh, crepes, drapes, um, brothel creepers and all that? Well, I think, I think, I, think, I, think where the, I mean, obviously, I would think the in, in, in inspiration came from, there was a band in America called Shana and R. Ah, right. Who, who we, we quite admired, but um, they were they more they were more of um, the West Side Story uh, image. What America never had was Teddy Boys. Um, there is something peculiar to Britain. So, uh, so we thought, well, look, if you're going to do a rock and roll show um, and you're going to do Vincent stuff and all that, let's let's put it to an era where. You know, the music would be realistic. And, you know, the 50s, 60s and so on, where Teddy Boys in England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, everywhere, um, were, you know, a youth movement at the time. Let's let's do that. And, um, you know, I would say that the Teddy Boy image came because of that. I mean, I, you know, we just put the music to the, the image, basically. Yeah, because I actually, I got myself, um, there is another presenter here at BRFM, uh, Di Hayward, and I actually um, bought a Teddy Boy suit of um, Di Hayward, and it fitted me lovely at the time, but unfortunately it doesn't fit me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the size of Di Hayward and the size to me? You'd understand why, let me tell you. <laughs> so, um, there's other things I want to ask you as well, if we, if we were... Don't mind. Is of course you. You're currently on tour. Yeah, we all. Yeah, we all. Yeah, we all. We're constantly on tour. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, um, uh, I think the, uh, we're going to be doing an arena tour as well in June. That's right. Yeah. You um on is it with um Bay City Rollers, David Essex, and the Osmonds? That's right. I mean, 
We've done one of those before with the Osmonds. Um, the last one, it was about six, seven years ago. Mm. Um, I think that had David Cassidy oh, right. on the bill at that time. So, it, it, at that, and that time it would have been ourselves, David Cassidy, David Essex, and the Osmonds. And that was quite a good, that's quite an, uh, an interesting tour as well. But I think this one will be, you know, equally as interesting because, you know, we, the gig will be going to sort of, the, or the main one would be the O2. But for so anybody in your area, it would probably be the motor point in Cardiff. That's right, that's on the 22nd of June at the yeah. motor point arena. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I might just be popping along to that one myself, to be quite honest. Well, well, well when, if, when you do, or if you do, make yourself known. Yes, I will, no problem at all, because it would be nice to see the band again, because, like I say, there's a few years now since I've actually seen the band, yeah. and uh, you are actually uh, um, doing the, after you've done that tour in, because that lasts through the whole month of June, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then you carry on with your tour as well then, mm. and you're in Swansea, Cumbran, yes, yes. Llanethley, Neath, Brecon, and Rill. Yes, that's right. Now, now, Cumbran is a sort of like um, literally 15 minutes away from my house, so, uh, <laughs> so I could well, have maybe a... Maybe you could invite us to the tea. Yeah, well, I could have a double whammy, couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, how many actual members of the original band are now playing with you? Um, just Rod and myself. Right, Rod and yourself, yeah. Because, yeah. of course, Dave did um, retire, didn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, Dave, well, I mean, Dave, Dave is um, managing the band now, anyway. That's right. How is he? Is he okay? He's retired from the uh, road. I mean, the, I can imagine for a singer, um, it's quite, it could be quite tough, you know, doing gigs all the time, up and down, and it's, it's, it's bound to pay, you know, you know, play on your sort of uh, physical being and all the rest of it. And um, Dave decided that, you know, he's you know, he, he, had his time. And um, decides that he wants to sort of do other things, but, uh, but also be managing us as well. So, I mean, it's, it's David, uh, you know, David's still in the band, but not on stage. Uh, I see what you mean, yes. Of course, all the, all the singing, like you said, uh, must have a toll on the old um, voice box. Well, it does, it does. But, and, of course, he couldn't get a better manager, really, because um, Dave Bartram would only have the band's best interest in, at heart. Well, well, absolutely. But, but, but before Dave left the band, anyway, he was managing us. Anyway, but Dave's been managing the band for 15, 20 years, anyway. Oh, tremendous. Because, like I say, of course, Dave was the front man when I was, uh, last time I have seen him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it... Uh... I mean, we've got a good front man in Andy. Right, so, uh, so what's his name? And Andy Pilos. Ah, right, so uh, we look forward to seeing that. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you, you know, I think you'll be impressed. After I certainly am, so... You know, there's Andy, and there's Dean, and there's Rob, and oh. there's Paul, and uh, they're the new members. Oh, that's tremendous. Uh, so, so do you still, um, got any, um, you know, you do your, there's a set, obviously, of the, all the hits. Do you do any others besides the hits that you... Well, uh, we do all the hits, we hit, uh, um, yeah, we do stuff from, um, uh, oh, no, from the, some, of the al some of the albums and all the rest of it, so... It's all, well, actually, what we do, we do two sets. Right. The first set um, has some some hits in, and it's got stuff from albums and favorite songs, and, you know, Johnny Remember Me, things like that. They're the ones that like some, what the fans have asked, actually asked for. Um, we'll, be, we'll be later in this year adding some more stuff to that as well. And that's the first half. The second half is just like, you know... Uh, Shibori Wari History, Top of the Pop, basically. So, it's all the hits in the second half. Well, that's tr absolutely tremendous, because uh, I actually had a listener earlier on, because I did announce, of course, that we would be speaking to you uh, at 12 o'clock, and uh, first request came in was Shibori Wari and A Night at Daddy G's. Yes. Yes, and we'll be doing that one as well. <laughs> well yeah, we, do, we, we do Daddy G's. It is, a, you know, when you go through the list of um, songs that you actually had, because you had uh, number one albums, you had 23 top 40 singles, That's right. 10 uh, top 10 singles, and 8 top 40 albums. The, the list just goes on and on. It is so impressive. It really is. Yeah, great. Yes, that's just really nice to know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm educating you now, am I? Sorry? 
See? I'm educating you. You are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I am, a, I, I am a bit of an anorak when it comes to show audio, audio, I must admit it. Right, Romy, well, I'd, I'd like to say thank you very, very much for uh, joining us here at uh, PRFM. It's been an absolute pleasure for me. Well, it's been my pleasure, often speaking to somebody who, who, who knows more about your money money than I do. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just going to ask you one last question, because um, obviously from where the band hails, and uh, is it true that your father had a trial for Leicester City? Who? Your father. My father? Yeah. No, 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 that's good. No, I, I played for Leicester City School Boys, and I was, I was signed... For Leicester City until about 17 or, 17 or 18. I, I've got into their 18, and, um, you know, by that time, though, I was already playing drums anyway. So it wasn't the father, no, I was at Leicester City. Wow, so that's one thing I got wrong then. Yeah, well, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well I bet you were, you were pleased now because, of course, Leicester will be playing in the Premiership next well, year. Leicester, yeah, I'm glad, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad they've gone up there. I mean, a friend of mine who is an Arsenal fan said to me the other day, enjoy your 38 matches, because season after that you'll be back down. But you never, ever know, do you? You know, but who, who knows, who knows? But I mean, I still look for Leicester City's results, and I am absolutely well chuffed that they've gone back at, into the Premier League, where they, believe, where, you know, where they deserve to be. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Um, well, like, to be honest, though, I'm, like I say, I'm a Leeds United fan myself, okay, but... That's good. But uh, it's not looking good at the moment. We are suffering, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> As all football fans do uh, across the way, like, don't they? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, uh, I say, uh, let's say, thanks very, very much for um, talking to us here at BRFM, Romeo. It's my pleasure. And uh, if you would be so kind, to just to stay on the line for a couple of seconds, and uh, we can have a quick chat to you with my station manager. And then, uh, like I said, it, it's been an absolute pleasure for me, and uh, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, cheers. All the best, Romeo. Thank okay. you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Romeo, challenger of show Waddy Waddy.